I am excited to announce my new podcast, Giving Legends. It's an opportunity for me, Hannibal Navies, and my co-host, Charlie Batch, to talk with people of influence who are committed to building a legacy through service. Stay tuned and learn what makes them Giving Legends. What's going on, everyone? This is Charlie Batch. I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Hannibal Navy. What's going on, good people? And we are, thank you for joining us for Giving Legends Podcast. And we are here on Media Road. You can see it is a lot more activity going on behind us. But this episode is brought to you real quick by Zoa Energy. It is powered by great taste, electrolytes, BNC vitamins, zero sugar, and caffeine from green tea and green coffee. Available on Amazon at all stores near you, like 7-Eleven, Costco, and more. For more information, go to Zoa energy.com that's z-o-a energy.com so just mention a little bit about what's going on behind me as you see the activity here but we are joined by no other than a geo of all trades mrs Tamela Jones. Oh, How are you, young lady? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Is this your first time on Media Row? This is. It's what? it's huge and it's very exciting. <laughs> Was it what you expected? Or what did no. you expect coming in? You know, I'm used to whenever we do promotions for anything, it's like round table. You have interviews sitting at a, interviewers sitting at a round table and you just go from room to room. But this is yeah, spectacular. Right. It's like a big convention. Yes, yes, yes. You ever been to Super Bowl before? I have not. You have not? No. That's on our bucket list. So we That's on my we bucket list. Cross that off, right? <laughs> so as we sit here today, I know you're sitting around and talking about, we want to talk about and highlight some of the things that you are doing currently and along with some of the community work that you do and some of the things that you're passionate about. Well, I'm very, as far as community work goes, I'm very passionate about anything that has to do with children. Whenever it's about uplifting the youth, uh, for instance, Charlie Mack, he's a good friend of Will Smith. Every year in Philadelphia, he goes out to different youth facilities where kids for trouble uh, end up, and he brings a, a group of celebrities, and we go to a few of those facilities and uplift them and tell them, hey, you know what, you're here, but it doesn't matter where you come from, it matters where you end up. And a lot of us, we don't come from rich places. We come from, you know, single parent homes or, you know, low income homes, and we found something that made us feel whole and we made a, a career out of it. So we try to inspire the kids to, to find something they love to do for a living, you know? and stop all the nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it, and I get it, and I love everything that you're doing, and I think, I just want to pause for a quick moment because I got to get a little ahead of myself, right? Because we do have an audience that may or may not necessarily know who you are, but talking about in the world, an actress, and how did you get to that particular <laughs> point? Because everyone sees the star on who you are right now, right? But they don't necessarily take and understand the path that it takes to get to that point. Talk a little bit about that on how you got to and took that direction. Well, um, growing up, I grew up in Pasadena, California. I went to a, a fundamental school, Marshall Fundamental, and I went from 6 through 12. I knew when I was young I always wanted to be famous because I watched fame and I, Debbie Allen, you know, fame cost, you know, so I, I wanted to be a part of that. I just didn't know how, but going to that school, I saw Lark Voorhees, who was on Saved by the Bell every Saturday morning. She was in my class. And then the following year, Jaleel White, who's Urkel, shows up. And I'm like, all oh, these kids can do it. I can do it. And so uh, my family had a catering business, and uh, they got called to do House Party. And I met Tisha Campbell on the set, and it was her mother that inspired my mom to take the steps to get me in acting classes and that's where I was discovered in an acting class and it's been a blessing ever since you know baby steps all the way up I babysat to pay for my acting classes I babysat um, oh my god I'm drawing a blank right now Blake Lively that was my little baby for a long time. Um, but I've been doing it since I was 14. I'm 14 now. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that's okay. I, want, I want to pod you real quick because okay. at that moment at 14, right? Because you start to go through that, do I belong here stage, right? right. What was that wow moment for you when you said you want to, I belong here. And then I no longer walk into the room nervous. I belong here. What was that? When, when do you think that moment was for you? Well, I will tell you, I was I, I booked a commercial at 14 and I thought I was a superstar. Right. And the agency that I was with said, if you don't get your stuff together, we're going to drop you. Mm -hmm. And that was after I think I was 17 when that happened, because I didn't audition. I just thought that commercial was everything. Once they told me that every audition I went in, I was free. 
and I, all the nerves left and I just was like, it's my time to do it. And I started booking. And I think my first guest star was the Wayans Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad start, right? It was a great start. It was wonderful. But it was about, yeah, use your nerves to push you forward so you can perform well. Use all the things they taught you in Lee Strasberg acting class and all the other workshops. You have to do the work. Right. Everybody thinks it's all glitz and glamour, but... There's work that has to be done. You have to be taught certain things, certain stage directions. When people tell you things to do, you gotta know what they're talking about. Then once you get on the set, you better show up knowing your lines because time is money and you can't waste anybody's money. Then you gotta realize this is a business. Mm -hmm. As fun as it is, it's a business. No you, got, you can't play, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I felt like I arrived after Booty Call. Okay. That's when I felt like, okay, I'm here, you know, yeah. because after that movie came out, there was some sort of buzz about this new little black girl who's spicy <laughs> and you need to hire her. And Yvette Lee Bowser, who is an extraordinary um, female executive producer and writer and creator, she created Living Single. Mm -hmm. She created the show For Your Love that I was on. She told me to come audition and I booked it. And from that point on, it was just kept going, kept going, steady. And I realized the only way I could be steady is if I stayed grounded. Mm -hmm. You have to be grounded. You can't smell your own armpits mm -hmm. and say it smells <laughs> like roses. You gotta, no doubt. You gotta be willing to get dirty and, uh, and sacrifice and do some things that you may not get paid any money for in the beginning, but it's a good look for you so that you can, right. you know? And then there's the press. You know, it's not just about the red car, but you got to talk about what you're doing. <laughs> and I no think, doubt. I, you know, that's the most important thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. And that was a heck of a movie. I did like Woody <laughs> Carr. That was, man, that was, yeah, that was a heck of a movie. So. Said, I was like, listen, me and my buddy used to crack up at that movie. We used to roll at that movie. Do you have, like, a, you know, you, you have a lot of movies under your belt. You know, you started with Booty Call. I didn't realize that was your, your first movie, but... Um, it was my first speaking role. My first movie was How to Make an American Quilt. Really? I played the flashback scene. I was Maya Angelou's great-great-grandmother. Wow. Who was just... If you look at that movie, you're going to see me in slave gear. The, free, the slaves slave were gear. just freed. And I had this bonnet on, and I'm following a crow, and the crow leads me to my love, my husband. And we <laughs> settle there, and that's how the quilt was born. <laughs> so I'm curious, because you know, acting is a whole nother world, different world for me. You obviously, comedy is, is something, the you know, first booty call obviously <laughs> is comedy. Do you have, is, is comedy different acting? I mean, it's different acting, but is it harder to transition in and out of different roles? Do you get typecasted as a comedian, comedy acting for, you know, as you try to transition into other roles? Because obviously you've done comedy, so do they look at you just as comedy? And is it hard to transition into other roles because you do comedy? Well, it was hard, but then you, you keep auditioning for things that aren't comedy. Mm -hmm. And I got Castle um, mm -hmm. to play a medical examiner. I never want to play a medical examiner again. That medical jargon, oh, yeah, I, can I had to learn. I, I basically went to med school to learn mm -hmm. all of that stuff. That playing a doctor is really tough. And then I played a drill sergeant. You just, you got to make them see you mm -hmm. and not hold you there. But now I want to do comedy and nobody thinks I'm funny. They're like, you played all the serious stuff. I'm like, I started in comedy. That's the, that's the direction they put you in and they're trying to put you in that bucket. You're like, you're so much more than that. So much more than that. But it is your job as an artist to show them because they won't. They'll just put you in whatever category you, you start in and that's it. So you have to... You have to break out. So how do you show them when, you know, obviously they're the gatekeepers of who they want to, you know, bring on as the actors you audition for these roles. How do you show them your other roles if it's a certain type of movie? How do you show that you have this range in acting? Well, I have my people call the different casting directors. Mm -hmm. And if it's a role that I think anybody can play, mm -hmm. ask them if they'll see me. Right. If it's written Caucasian, just ask them. Right. If they'll just mm -hmm. let me just mm -hmm. have a shot. Right. And that worked out for me. Yeah. One time for Castle. That was written for a Caucasian actress, Lainey. Okay. And I went in there, and it was never supposed to be a series regular. It was just a guest star in the, in the pilot. But once we got picked up, 
I think it was when we were in New York shooting, I went to Victoria's Secrets because I ran out of panties. <laughs> so I go in there and I was with uh, the lead girl, Stana. And uh, we're both in there and the kids went crazy. They were like, oh my God, I love you. She was like, who are you? I'm like, I just did a bunch of urban movies and you know, the kids know me. And they were like, oh my God, they were literally crying. Right. So right. she went and told the producers. And the producers went and looked and, and they just offered me series regular. And you talk about your producers, right? You have some new things and new uh, work that you have uh, promoting. What do you have going on right now? So I, I have, I'm really proud of this movie. I have a new movie, Ordinary Angels, starring myself, Hilary Swank, Alan Richson, and Nancy Tra uh, Travis, who I love from Three Men and a Baby. She's done lot, way more than that, but I love her from that. This movie is what we need right now in the world. It's a feel-good movie, it's a faith-based movie, and it's a movie that's based on a true story that shows if we come together as a community and we help someone, we can move mountains if we come together and we believe and we have faith. This story, this little girl, her mom died of a rare liver disease. The family was left with a lot of big hospital bills and then um, they're trying to get on with their life and then the baby, two daughters she had, the baby ends up with the liver disease and they said that she could have a trans, you know, a transplant, but she's got to get here. And then she had all these bills, so they were going to like kick her out of the hospital. But this one woman, who had her own issues, I'm not going to tell you the whole. Right, right, right. <laughs> As you should, tease her. Give she, it. she sees the article in the newspaper and decides, I need to do this, and gets everyone else involved. And it's a, it's a beautiful story. It's a true story. And I think the message is something that the world needs right now. And, I, and then you get to that point and everybody gets excited, love the body of work that you have created and getting ready to create. You have some young ladies that are out here that are inspiring to get to where you are right now. What words of encouragement would you give them and what advice would you give them to take the path to hopefully hope make it one day where you're at? One, respect yourself to the fullest and don't allow anyone to disrespect you in any way. You don't have to go off. They are always ready for us to go off because we're women. You just walk away silently and you find another place for you. You don't have to go down the same road. Also, prepare yourself. Take acting classes and have uh, um, your family. Have some, some people that love and care about you that keep you grounded the whole way through. Your acting classes are going to help you know what you need to know. The grounding is going to help you keep the energy that you have, which will be positive and not let any of this stuff, because there's a lot of things that could taint you and, and make you a little bitter. Don't let it. And don't be afraid of the word no, because you're going to hear it all the time. Don't let that word discourage you. I keep hearing it still. I, I just heard it last week. No, we don't want her. It doesn't matter. Somebody's going to want you eventually. And just more, more important, Keep the most high in front of everything that you do. Keep God. I'm not a Bible thumper, but I'm a very spiritual individual. And I believe if you have faith in the person upstairs, man or woman, then you have faith in yourself. I love it. I love it. <laughs> love it. We want to be respectful of your time. We appreciate you stopping by the Giving Legends podcast. Before we leave, tell everybody how they can find you, any information that you want to share for anybody to follow you. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm Tam Jones and the number one. And uh, you can go see my movie, February 23rd, Ordinary Angels, released worldwide. So I'm wow. very excited about Congratulations. that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Been watching you for a long time. I'm just glad to have you on, glad to finally meet you and doing some great work. And look forward to what you continue to do. There we go. But we appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by the Given Legends podcast. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Given Legends podcast. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn and comment on what inspires you to be a Given Legend in your community.